Alright, stop what you're doing, look at the screen. Okay, are you watching? Watch this. Now, do I have your attention? Ladies and gentlemen, the Hong Kong Massacre is a deeply flawed gem from Vresky, which is basically just two people who've been working on this thing for the past few years. It's out now on Steam and PS4. It's fucking awesome, but it's also a little bit broken and unfinished. Still, I played it, I finished it, and I absolutely loved it. It deserves at least a look, so let me show you why. The Hong Kong Massacre is a top-down shooter that blends Hotline Miami with Max Payne. I've learned that most people see John Wick in this more than they see Max Payne, but that's probably because Max Payne is a little old these days and the reference is a little dated. Trust me, I was there when Max Payne came out. It blew everyone's fucking mind. John Wick is cool. Max Payne is way cooler. So just in case you haven't played Hotline Miami, the objective of a game like this is to clear the maps of enemies without dying. Enemies generally only take one bullet to kill, but so do you. And the general rhythm of the game is to continue dying over and over again until you eventually learn the map and the enemy placements so you can survive. But more than that, the goal is to develop these really smooth flowing pathways through the level so you can just become this uninterrupted tidal wave of death that just washes these faces goons from the mortal plane without ever breaking your stride. Hotline Miami was an utter revelation when it came out. We'd never really seen anything like that in terms of design, but added to that was perfect tight controls, an absolutely killer soundtrack that is among the best in video game history, and a weird psychedelic story that was just kind of trippy and just super good. Anyway, absolutely genius game. The Hong Kong Massacre and Hotline Miami are like two brothers. If one of them was the school valedictorian and captain of the debate team and road crew and was the most popular guy in school, and the other one was just really, 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 really ridiculously good looking. The Hong Kong Massacre tries to do all of the things that Hotline Miami does, and it doesn't get any of them as right as Hotline Miami, but it gets them right enough that the experience works, and damn if it isn't the sexiest damn thing while it's doing it. So let's talk about the good first. I won't even waste time talking about the visuals except to say that it looks incredible because of all the particles and the lighting effects and whatever, weapon flash and sparks and explosion and destruction and it just looks awesome. The game is just dripping with such an incredible sense of style and it's gritty underworld setting and it's Hong Kong eateries and it's office spaces and all of them are just beautiful. The whole game looks great but if you need me to tell you that then clearly you aren't seeing what I am seeing. Gameplay wise, the Hong Kong Massacre sets itself apart from Hotline Miami in its stylish flow that it allows you to create. See, a good run of Hotline Miami is about efficiency and speed. When you're playing Hotline Miami properly, you feel ruthless and efficient, but you don't feel the same style-infused rush that Hong Kong Massacre allows for. The ability to slow down time, to see the bullets coming at you, to dive through those bullets to dodge them, to slide into a space and surprise your enemies with a shotgun blast to the face that sends sparks flying everywhere and destruction all around, it's just... These are the things that Hotline Miami could never do, but it's precisely where the Hong Kong Massacre shines. It feels amazing to complete a flawless, uninterrupted run in both of these games, but it looks a billion times better to do it in the Hong Kong Massacre. I think your appreciation of this game is going to be dictated by your commitment to style. It's actually very possible and very easy to complete this game because the slowdown time mechanics and the dive mechanic, they're both very forgiving and they make it super simple to cheese the maps. If your objective is just to get things done, then you probably won't love the Hong Kong Massacre. What I did, and why I love this game, and how I strongly recommend you play it, is I said to myself, I'm never going to settle for anything but perfect uninterrupted flow. 
I never wanted to stop moving. I never wanted to cheese anything. I wanted to be this unstoppable, uninterruptible force of nature. And that meant that I failed each level dozens and dozens of times in pursuit of the perfect route. But when I found it, it was always bliss. So along the way to achieving these perfect runs, you're going to have to put up with a hell of a lot of bullshit. The first thing is, the controls are fucked. They just are. They're really bad. Firstly, you can't remap any buttons, which is just awful. And yeah, the game should not have been released until this was implemented, but whatever, let's move on. I played with a controller on PC, and the first thing you'll notice is that there's a fair amount of input lag in effect. It just takes a split second longer for inputs to register than it should, and this is exacerbated by the fact that your character's locomotion takes a second to get going, which in a game like this is kind of frustrating because it's very much about perfect movements. Way, way worse though is whatever the hell is happening with control stick inputs. Firstly, the movement of the sticks when you're rotating them around is just way too slow. It feels like it takes a million years for your reticle to move, and this just sort of kills a lot of the fun. But the biggest issue is that there are certain points in that motion that will snap the reticle to a completely opposite direction. So if you move the control stick down at the wrong angle, you won't move the reticle just a little bit to the left, you'll do almost a complete 180 degree turn, and this usually ends up getting you killed because you're not shooting at the target that you're meant to be shooting at and he shoots you instead. This happened to me so many times that I completely lost count. And the thing is, you can't even recreate this reticle movement a lot of the time. Like sometimes it snaps to the opposite direction and sometimes it moves slowly. It's completely broken. And if I didn't enjoy this game so much, I absolutely would have stopped playing this game because of this. And many people have quit this game for this reason as the many Steam reviews will tell you. The other major gripe I have is that in the last chapter of the game, a new enemy type is added that has a bulletproof vest, which means that you need to shoot him twice to kill him, where every other enemy only requires one bullet. Now, this would seem like a really logical new enemy type to add that mixes up the gameplay flow, but in my mind, it's the perfect example of how to make your game harder in a way that is completely incompatible with the gameplay loop you've built. The brilliance of this game is its stylish, murderous flow, and your to make each level clearance as uninterrupted as possible. The problem with these enemies is that they completely arrest that flow. When you shoot them once, they roll out of the way, so you sort of need to hang around for a second while they complete that roll animation, and then shoot them again. This is made even worse by the fact that they can roll when they haven't even been shot at. So you can see them, they roll, and then you have to wait for them to finish, and then you shoot them once, and then they roll again, and you have to wait, and then you shoot them again to finally kill them, at which point you can then move on. This may seem like a small gripe, but I really hated the last chapter of this game because of these enemies. They ruin every level they're a part of because I just couldn't capture the same feeling of uninterrupted flow that every preceding level allowed me to create. Story-wise, the game goes for this fragmented storytelling, sort of like Hotline Miami, but it never goes anywhere. It's never interesting. And it usually just feels like the same cutscene over and over again without any real progression of the story. It's a very, very big miss. Just. I don't, I, I don't know what they were trying to hear. Soundtrack wise, it's pretty great at the start, but you'll soon realize that there's only a limited number of tracks available and you'll get pretty sick of them by the end. I like them, they're cool, they definitely fit, but I might recommend playing with the game music for the first half of the game and then perhaps listening to your own music as you progress further. There are a total of 35 missions in the game, including boss battles, but each boss battle is identical to the last. I think I spent on average around 15 minutes clearing each mission because I wanted to get that perfect perfect flow thing each time. So you're looking at around eight or nine hours of gameplay like that. But as I said, this could be much, much shorter if you just focus on clearing each mission by playing things super safe. So I've listed a whole bunch of problems with this game, but despite all of those, I just loved the Hong Kong Massacre. It's just so satisfying to play. It's so pretty, it's so stylish. And since it's been a long time since Hotline Miami 2 was released, 
it's so good to return to this genre. You'll find yourself slipping into a focused, repetitive trance of experimentation as you glide through each level, trying to figure out the perfect path of destruction. And all the while, the dazzling visuals will keep constantly snapping you back into focus when cool shit goes down. Hotline Miami functions perfectly, and it's clearly the better game, but the Hong Kong Massacre is capable of moments of such impossible visual spectacle that it constantly forces you to forget all of the broken shit that led to those moments. It's not a perfect game. It may not even be a very good game, depending on your tolerance for imperfection, but this game is worth a damn. Check it out.